Hi, I'm gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> I'm gonna need more batteries, more power. Um, let's have a look. Um, I showed you in a recent video about, uh, did the analysis of uh, my new AERL uh, battery pack. I've got 15 kilowatt hours of battery, which I originally thought was, you know, that'd be actually quite, quite decent. You know, it's more than a Tesla uh, Powerwall, for example, which is what, 12 or 13 or something. Sure, and, but, Granted, I am only going 80% uh, discharge on it, uh, which means uh, that doesn't mean going up to 80%. It actually means going to 100% and then discharging to 20% automatically uh, cuts off. Um, that's recommended by uh, Peter from AERL. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's recommended what I'm doing just to improve the life. But let's actually have a look here. This is today, and you've got to remember, this is still winter time here in Australia, and 100% uh, battery, and I reached 100%, uh, well, uh, let's actually go down here, now, state of uh, charge here, you can see that started charging about oh, 8.30, something like that, and it was, granted, we weren't home, <laughs> of course, there was nothing to, uh, chewing the power or anything, but uh, by like 12.30, uh, 12.30 or something, it was already like 100%, uh, percent. and uh, as it turns out, Two days in a row now, where <laughs> I did I did have a spate there. Let's just go last two days, shall we? Might need yeah. Last last two days. Last night I uh, got to hundred percent. Actually, no, yeah, here it is. So this is the day because this is today over here, and this is we got to hundred percent, and then uh, started. You know, we turned on some things there, and by what is that? That's midnight there still at like uh, 43%, and we got down to about 29% thereabouts before it started uh, charging back up, and we were, once again, we were, uh, that's by 2 o'clock, we were at 100% there, and uh, then we got through the next night, look at that, 42%, and something, oh, no, uh, something at 7am, that's where Mrs. EV vlog must have woken up, the kids woken up, something's turned on there, and uh, yeah, we lasted through the night, but of course we've had some bad days due to weather and stuff like that. So if I go for the last seven days, you can see that it didn't uh, fully charge the pack here. So, you know, then there's really terrible days over here. And not only terrible weather, but we also happen to be doing stuff. Like we're charging up the EV, for example, and the EV is going to take the um, all the solar we've got as a priority uh, before it goes into the uh, battery pack. Or, you know, we, we're using the oven a lot, for example. I think she baked like, you know, three times during the day or something. So there's like, you know, three or four hours of like oven cooking and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it chews a lot of uh, power there. So, but yeah, look, for the last uh, two days, and probably for tonight, because it's very mild tonight, so air cons aren't going to go on or anything. Um, so yeah, unless we cook, no, it's uh, pizza night. It's pizza night tonight. So the oven will go on for like, uh, you know, 20 minutes to heat up and then 20 minutes to cook the pizza or however long it uh, takes. Um, we'll get through tonight and it's movie night. So yeah, I don't, I don't say we'll get for three nights in a row. In the middle of winter, where my uh, nominal 11 kilowatt panel system has fully charged the battery by, yeah, by 12 o'clock there, by one, by almost two o'clock there, and by 12 o'clock there. So three days in a row now, uh, where it's, um, and it's, it barely lasts all night. That's the thing, right? If it charges up to 100%. Now, a bigger battery pack, um, of course, I can expand up to six batteries. So I can double my 15 kilowatt hour pack if I want. It's just a matter of money, how much I want to spend on batteries. Of course, they're about 2,900 bucks uh, Aussie street price per 5.1 kilowatt hour pack. So I'm thinking about buying two more packs. I think, um, because I'm going to have a lot of excess uh, solar in summer, and we will actually use the solar pool, uh, sorry, we will, we will use the heat pump pool heater in the uh, shoulder months around summer there, so probably starting next month, we might be dumping some excess energy, So, but it's always a trade-off, you know, choosing a battery pack um, size is like some days you're just not going to use it at all. <laughs> you know, you're just not going to have any left over to go into the pack. So you're not going to charge it. But the good thing is if you have a, but you know, you can top it up over several days. And then if I've got a pack 
that, you know, we don't stand a snowball's chance in hell of discharging it overnight, for example, which we would if I got a 25 kilo, if I bought two more and I had a 25 kilowatt hour pack, um, even discharging to 80%, uh, I, I don't think we could turn on enough stuff in the middle of the night. We, we'd have to be charging the EV um, as an emergency thing in the middle of the night, which you don't normally do. A lot of people ask this, no. We don't ordinarily, we wouldn't ordinarily charge the EV from this battery pack or from the grid. It comes from excess solar during the day because we have the lifestyle to support that. That's why I ins installed the Zappy charger and almost all of our EV energy has come from excess solar, which is great. Um, but yeah, I need a bigger boat. <laughs> I need a bigger boat. 15 kilowatt hours just doesn't cut it, I don't think. So, eh, interesting, huh? Um, so yeah, regular family of four. We've got a very energy efficient house, but everything is electric. So we do not have gas heating. We do not have gas hot water anymore. We disconnected that, changed over to electric heat pump. Um, we don't have any of that um, stuff. So everything's electric. We've got induction cooktops. We don't have gas cooktops or anything. We don't have gas anything. We disconnected the gas. Only thing we've got gas for is barbecue, um, which is, uh, there's nothing wrong with gas. Gas is really good. <laughs> gas is really efficient um, and relatively uh, cheap. But we decided to go for all electric because we just wanted to do everything from the solar for the warm and fuzzies. So, and to not pay any gas bills anymore. So it's really quite cool. Um, yeah, look at that. I need a bigger boat. Um, <laughs> yeah, the 15 kilowatt hours, uh, just, uh, well, it, it's about 12... Um, when I do the zero to 80%. Who thinks, leave it in the comments down below, should I go against Peter from AERL, <laughs> the designer of the battery, should, should I go against him, his advice that says 80%? Should I go to like 90, just nudge it, or go to 85? You know, yeah, good enough for Australia, 85. Because I want to have, you know, I want these, ba these batteries might last 15 years or something, right? If I treat them well. And the, the other thing about getting... Uh, more getting uh, more batteries, putting more batteries in there. It's more betterer uh, because you're sharing the current. You aren't uh, not only sharing the current when you charge it. So I can charge at a maximum of five kilowatt hours, and if I've got five battery packs, it'll only charge each pack at one kilowatt, right? So um, likewise, if we're discharging, I can only discharge at a maximum of five kilowatts. Did I say five kilowatt hours before? I said five. Should be power, not energy. Um, five kilowatts discharge, because that's the limit of the DI inverter that the battery's hooked up to. So, I uh, yeah, so the more batteries you have, the greater the current spread, the, you're lowering the charge and discharge current across all the packs, because they're all self-balanced. They all, you know, they all talk to each other and they're all self-balanced. Um, I, I, I should actually get a clamp meter on that. Although I thought it'd be cool to get like multiple current clamps. I'd have to, I don't know if I can scrounge to give a three current clamps um, and put them on all the battery packs, uh, for example, and then hook it up to a scope and then draw on a, like a load, turn it on instantly and see if they all sort of like balance in real time kind of thing, like current sharing real time. That'd be cool um, to try and do that. So if you want me to do that, leave it in the comments down below. And uh, I think I do have a couple of spare current clamps somewhere. I mean, I've got lots of, <laughs> I've got a whole stock worth of current clamps, but they don't hook up, you know, they've, they've got no output. Um, so you can't hook them up to a, a uh, scope. I just thought it'd be cool to capture that when I turn on the load. Do, do they all share or does it take time? Do they cascade through? I don't know. I, like, you know, but yeah, they are supposed to actively balance each other. So um, yeah, so I'm going to get improved life there. So the more batteries I have, in theory, the greater, the longer life I'm going to get on all of them. Um, so not only will I have more capacity, it's just a cost thing you know it's, uh, battery packs are great if if but only if you can afford it you know it's a lot of coin um don't have a lot of spare cash at the moment lots of renovations happening um so yeah huh. a bigger boat i think i'll get two more i think i'll i think i'll try and pony up for two more batteries and uh see how it goes because come summertime we're going to have a ton of excess and where am I going to dump it all? Into the pool? Somebody just suggested I, I get a big, big big Bitcoin mining rig and have it set to like a, a uh, excess um, energy thing. It'll like actually triggers the <laughs> Bitcoin miner to start when it 
<laughs> when it does that, uh, no, no, I think that's a pretty uh, low return on your investment. Um, and I will get changed to a smart meter so I can eventually even potentially sell energy back to the grid if I don't use it. But I don't know. Don't know if I like that idea. Um, but it, a lot of people out there say it helps with the payback. So there's a couple of people I've been talking to in Australia that are doing this. And because uh, there are a couple of providers, I think there's two, at least two providers out there, energy providers, who do actually support, you know, selling your stored battery back to the grid and you can charge your EV for really dirt cheap during the night and stuff like that. Um, but it's not a regular thing. But there are a couple of suppliers out there. But eh, bigger battery, thoughts, comments down below, <laughs> yay or nay, yay or nay. <laughs> If you disagree that I should get more batteries, put an F in the chat. <laughs> F in the chat for uh, more batteries or a uh, yes, go for it, Dave. Install more, more batteries, more better. And then I'll do a like a quick little tear down if I get a new uh, battery. I'll take the lid off just to see the prismatic cells. I think they've got 16. I think there's 16 prismatic cells, I think Peter said, uh, inside each one of those. So, yeah. There you go. So anyway, for those who are keen about the uh, voltage and current uh, charts, there you go. Isn't that groovy? And power and auxiliary power. I do believe that's the micro inverter input, but I haven't hooked it up yet. I've got my panels up there. My two panels are on the roof, <laughs> but I haven't installed that Hoy Miles, uh, that two channel Hoy Miles uh, power inverter, uh, micro inverter yet. Um, so I've got, I'm going to hook that up. I'm going to hook that up. Might do that tomorrow, perhaps, but yeah, there you go. Oh, for those wondering about the battery temperature, hasn't gotten above 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, the inverter temperature looks like it does peak at about 60. That's when it's uh, doing maximum five kilowatts, I guess. Um, but yeah, you know, like ambient temperature because it's winter time here, it doesn't get much above 20 or something like that. But yeah, the battery temp, it just, it doesn't really heat up at all. It's not a problem. So there's my grid voltage for those curious. There you go. This uh, solar assistant thing's great. Shows everything. There's the grid frequency. Just got a couple of little dropouts there. Uh, and AC output voltage. Whoa, whoa. I haven't seen this before. What's, what's happening there with this uh, 181 volts? Oh, that's interesting. If anyone knows what that is, leave in the comments down below. Offhand? I, oh, do they correlate... They correlate with the grid frequency. Okay, so there's got to be a setting. There, there might actually be an advanced setting in the DI in there. It looks like it's when the frequency grid frequency, it's, is, it temp is the DI temporarily shutting off or something? I don't know. Once again, leave it in the comments down below if you know what the heck's going on there. Um, so yes, and yes, I do have a high mains voltage here. Yes, it does go, uh, goes up to... Practically the limit, which is 253, I think, is the le or is it 254, which is the legal uh, limit here in Australia. But I'm I'm right on the top. Same same here in the lab. Um, it's just my local area is very high in uh, mains voltage because we have a nominal 230 volts. We're not a 240 volt country anymore. They changed it like a decade or two back. 230 volts nominal. So there you go. Um, load power, uh, but that's not my entire house power because the DI is still. Um, doesn't know about the rest of the load. It only knows about which lo what load it's actually powering. Uh, and auxiliary load power. Oh no, that'd be the generator power. Okay. So what is what is that ox? Where is it? Ox ox power. What's oh what what is auxiliary PV power? What's aux is there an auxiliary PV input? I didn't think so. That's interesting. Because my once I hook up my two micro inverter panels. They should show up here, right, as generator power, I assume. <laughs> All right, I'll find out. Anyway, I need a bigger boat. Thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time. Oh, that's Mrs. EV Blog. Tell me to come home.